Okay, we're ready to start. Parsha Shalat, Tov Shenai and Hey. Back here at Beacon Column headquarters for another year. We're all excited to be here. Lots of new stuff happening here. People think we come back to the same place every week. Lots of exciting things happening here with lots of sponsorship opportunities. You can't get into all of them right now, but feel free to call Beacon Column office. They'll uh, let you know of all the different things and all the wonderful programs that are in store that are down the pipeline over here. And so every week that we come here, there's something new, exciting, brewing here, which makes it all that more uh, rewarding to be part of the Bikr Chalim here. So over the past few years, we've discussed this very difficult Parsha of the Miraglim. We all know the story of the Miraglim, but to really comprehend and really understand what happened here by the story of the Miraglim, the spies, that Moshe Rabbeinu sent into Eretz Yisrael, very, very difficult to understand. They went in to scout out Eretz Yisrael, and the Maraglim came back, and we all know that the Maraglim gave a negative report about Eretz Yisrael. Yet, we see something very interesting about the report that the Maraglim gave. We find, if you read the Psukim, we find something very, very interesting. When the Maraglim began, Giving their report, they said the following, and I'm going to read you the psukim. They said like this, Banu el asher We came, we came into Eretz Yisrael, we came into the land to which, to Moshe Rabbeinu, to Klein, so we said to the land that you sent us into, to send us to go see. And you know what that land is? Vegan, Zovas, Olov, Udevashi. It is a land that flows with milk and honey, and then they showed the fruit of Eretz Yisrael. And then they said, And then they said, that the, the cities are fortified. Then they went into their whole thing, We saw the children of giants, and then they went into the whole negative report. So what do we see? That they said some very not flattering things about Eretz Yisrael. And yet, I just read you the Pesukim, and what do we see? At the beginning, they said, the first thing they said was, Bono el who came to the land, the gans of us, we see, it was flowing with milk and honey. And that, they opened, the opening statement, the statement that they first said about Eretz Yisrael, they seemed to be singing the praise of Eretz Yisrael. The gans of us, Right? And seemingly, it doesn't fit in with the rest of their report. Very, very positive and complimentary statement about Eretz Yisrael. To start off, we always think that the Maraglim, they said bad, they said more, and they said worse, and all this Lashon Hara and everything about Eretz Yisrael. But yet, we take a look. They said the very first thing that it was an Eretz, Zavas Chalavu How do we How do we understand that? So Rashi bavarns this Kasha, really. And Rashi over here gives an answer. Rashi says just uh, like a lesson about life. Rashi throws in like one line and he says that the Miraglim, why did they say that it was an Eretz of us, Chalavadavash, if they wanted to give a whole negative report about Eretz Yisrael? So Rashi says that they had to stick in something positive, something true. Otherwise, people would not listen to them. Because you know, and we know human nature, and we know from ourselves, think about it, that people are turned off, if you hear a a total, complete baloney story, then you're not even listening. Like, what are you talking about? You're so enough already. If it's total, total falsehood, if everything is wrong, so what do you do? If you want someone to believe you, if you want someone to at least listen to you, so you throw in a little taster, you throw in something, a little hook, uh, a little hook for somebody to grab onto. You say something which is true. Oh, now you got their ears, you got them listening a little bit. Then you go on with everything that you want to throw in. If somebody wants to speak Lashon Hara, so you know what he'll do. He calls and he says something that, uh, a good word, something nice about the person. Oh, you're listening because you're supposed to listen to nice things about the person, about a person. That's what Chavz Chaim says. You should never really even talk about people because... You know what happens. Nobody's so happy that someone else should be so good and so great. So you start talking about people, and then you have people listening, and then you say something negative. 
So that's Rashi's shot. Rashi, Bavarin's discussion, Rashi says that's the reason they said that it was a land that flows with milk and honey. And Siva Shalom wants to answer in a bit of a different way. The Siva Shalom says, we know that the Maraglim were Anashim Gedalim. The Psukim, the Pasuk tells us in Parsha that Rashi B'nai Yisrael Lema. They weren't stomp people that they grabbed off the street or whatever was going on there in the Midbar. They grabbed out of the desert, out of the wilderness in the Midbar. They didn't stomp grab people off street corners. These were, these were very, very great people. But these great people, says in the Siva Shalom, they made a mistake. And what was the mistake that they made? They went to Eretz Yisrael and they saw the abundant beauty. Eretz Yisrael was so exceedingly beautiful and it had so much good in it. It was an Eretz of Aschalav of the Bosh. They saw that and they looked at it and they thought the following. They thought that because Eretz Yisrael has so much good, because there's so much beautiful Gashmias in Eretz Yisrael, it must be, it has to be that if there's so much good Gashmias, that this is a bad place for Ruchnias. The way they looked at it and the approach that they took and they saw Eretz Zobas, Cholobo Devash, they saw that Eretz Yisrael has so much beauty and anyone that, you look at Eretz Yisrael from the valleys to the mountains to the fruit and to everything, the beauty that Eretz Yisrael has, they looked at it and they said, there's so much Gashmias here that this is not a place for Ruchnias. That the typhus of the Gashmias things that are in Eretz Yisrael are going to be so great, so the Maradim were saying now that it would not be good for Klai Yisrael. Klai Yisrael, you're not going to be able to take the amount of Gashmias that's in Eretz Yisrael. And in Mitzrayim they knew that the Yidin, the Klai Yisrael, they were able to withstand this Yoinus. But what kind of Yisrael did they withstand in Mitzrayim? Klai Yisrael, they had the Nisoyen of poverty. They had nothing. They had no money. They had, didn't have anything in, in Mitzrayim. So we know, and Klai Yisrael was known for the fact that they could withstand the Nisoyen of poverty. But here, they're going to come into Eretz Yisrael, it's going to be a totally different Nisoyen. It's going to be a Nisoyen of Ashiras. Eretz Yisrael has so much good, so much potential, so much Gashmias, so many good things. That Nisoyen of affluence, they would not be able to withstand. They could not, they would not be able to stand up to that. That's what the Maraglam thought. And they would become so indulged in the Tigers and the Gashmias that they wouldn't be able to get to step one of the Ruchnias. And that is why the Maraglam began with saying that Eretz Yisrael is of Aschel the Bash. Not because they wanted to say a Mila, not because it is a Mila, because it totally and absolutely does not fit in with everything that we know and the approach that the Maragam were taking to say bad about Eretz Yisrael, so they shouldn't go in, they should stay in the Midbar. What they did was, they said it all, they said it that it was, and that all the good in Eretz Yisrael will be to the detriment of the people. They're saying that all the good, that's another bad thing about Eretz Yisrael, that it's so full of Gashmias, therefore it would be much better to stay in the Midbar. Stay here where it's Pashtus, where you don't have anything. You don't have all this affluence. You don't have all, these, all this produce. You don't have all the beautiful things of Eretz Yisrael. They say, you know what? Eretz Yisrael is no good because even for Yeruchnias, it's not good. So the Siva Shalom says, that this that the Maraglim said was a fundamental mistake in the thinking. And the Siva Shalom says with a beautiful Yisoyed and something we have to remember and something that applies to every one of us. It says like this, HaKadosh Baruch Hu, we know, wanted to have, when HaKadosh Baruch Hu made the Mishkan, Hashem wants to have a dwelling place on this earth. He wants to live with us in our surroundings. Hashem has enough in Shemayim. He didn't have to. He doesn't have to come down here. Hashem has everything He wants in Shemayim. Yet we see that Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted a Mishkan. He wanted a place amongst every one of us. He wanted a place, a Mishkan amongst Kla Yisrael. And He wanted to set it up. And Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted to set up a place in this world where there is every taiva and every single thing is available in Olam Hazed. 
on our earth, in our surroundings, everything is available. Yet Hashem wanted to be Dafki here. And says in the Siva Shalom that it's our job to take all those tithes and all those things that we have over here and take all those urges and not fulfill every one of our tithes. We have everything. We're surrounded, today especially, we're surrounded with cold tub, with everything, every tithe, everything you could ever want is here. But a Kodesh Baruch Hu wanted his mission here. And you know how we earn a Kodesh Baruch Hu in our midst? You know how we earn that Hashem should have a place in our house, in our streets, in our place? You know how we earn that? We, we take the tithes and we do not indulge in them. And we, not, we do not fulfill every one of our tithes. And that's the way to create a place for a Kodesh Baruch Hu in this world. So Moitsha Rabbeinu, sent the Miraglim into Eretz Yisrael to see, as the Pesach says, Hashmeno hi imrazel. So Pesach shot in the Pesach is, Moshe Rabbeinu went there to see. Uh, the, the literal translation is you sent them into the sea, is the land, a uh, fat land, is it rich land? Or imrazel? Is it, uh, Raz is like a very uh, uh, skinny, is it very sparse? It, 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 does it not produce a lot? That's what we Pesach understand. See, the Shalom says, Hashemeinah, he im razel. That Moshe Rabbeinu was sending the Miraglim in the Eretz Yisrael to see, is the Nisoyen of Eretz Yisrael a Nisoyen of poverty? Or is it one of abundance? Hashemeinah, he im razel. And whatever it is, we're going to be able to conquer it. Moshe Rabbeinu knew that whichever Nisoyen there is, we have the ability to rise to the challenge and overcome any test. But go see we need to know, is it the Nisoyim that we had in Mitzrayim, one of poverty? Or is it the Nisoyim of Ashiris that Eretz Yisrael is so rich and so beautiful? But either way, Moshe Rabbeinu knew and he thought that we can overcome because that's the way we're programmed. It's in us. We're supposed to see the title, see what's there, know what's there, but don't indulge in it. So the Torah tells us, the Torah tells us, the Torah tells us about Eretz Yisrael that Eretz Yisrael, don't fool yourself. Eretz Yisrael is the foundation and the source of everything that is good in this world. But yet it gives us the best chance with the tools of the Gashmias that we see. It gives us the best chance to see all the Gashmias. And that's the way we grow. To know that it's all there, and we have all the Nisyonis, but we overcome them. And that's what Eretz Yisrael, Eretz Yisrael has everything. But if you overcome the Nisyonis of the beauty of Eretz Yisrael, if you use it for the right things, you have all the tools in front of you. More than any other place, Eretz Yisrael gives us, you have a lot of Gashmias, but by using it right, you're able to be Dovuk Bashem more than any other place. And that was unlike the Miraglim. And that was the mistake that the Miraglim made. The Miraglim looked at the Gashmias and said, No, Gashmias can never have any shaykhs to Ruchmias. And we know, Moshe Rabbeinu said, No, that's the the, that's the the other way around. Go see an Eretz Yisrael because if you have the Gashmias, HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants you to use it for the right things. Because that's the way you grow. That's the way you build a, an environment and a house for Hashem. And that is the lesson of this week's Parsha. That's the mistake the Miragla made. And we have to know, we have to know that Kosh Baruch Hu put kol tov of everything Gashmi's in this world. But just that we should use it. And use it for Avodah Hashem. Use it in the right way.